Thank you all. Um, we are really excited today to have Liliana Dozen all the way here from Indiana. Uh, she was telling us all about the musty things in Indiana this morning over brunch. Yeah, there's some great dunes in Indiana. And um, I think it's just one random rock that I'm going to show us. Like, you know, I'm aware that I'm going to take a road trip to Indiana. <laughs> anyway, I'm Kristen. I am the executive director here at Blue Sky. Welcome, everybody. So glad you could make it for the talk. Um, I'm going to read Liliana's bio and, and the really long and long acknowledgement statement, and then we'll get started. Liliana Guzman, Colombian American, born 1993, is a photographer and painter whose artwork entwines topics of body, memory, sexuality, and the hidden landscapes of self. In May of 2021, Liliana completed her MFA in photography at the Eskenazi School of Architecture and Design at, at Indiana University, Bloomington. Her photographic practice incorporates a wide range of techniques and mediums from film photography and alternative processes to digital photography, painting, and drawing. Through the recurring subject matter of hand, touch, and gesture, Liliana's artwork expresses touch as not only formative and intimate experience, but as one that establishes both internal and external connections with ourselves and those around us. So, thank you so much, everyone, and I will talk back to you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, before I get started, just a huge thank you to Blue Sky. It's such an honor to see my work here. Um, thank you so much, C, for all of their work in supporting me and getting this show up on the wall. So um, once again, thanks for coming out. I love a good casual artist talk, so I'm going to be talking briefly about the series, a little bit about process, and then I'll just open it up for questions and comments and we can have more of a dialogue that way. So the series next to myself, it, it's really kind of about uncovering the layers of the self. And when I say layers of the self, I think about how memories, events, experiences throughout our lives build upon who we are. And it's something that's constantly changing. Um, and it's something that's very complex and I'm really interested in sort of uncovering these layers. Um, this is something that I think makes it hard to know someone really closely, but it also makes it hard to know yourself. And there are a lot of really rich things um, that happen when you think about those parts of yourself, those kind of layers that make up who you are. Specifically, this series stems from my growing up in a bicultural household. So I am a Colombian American. My father's from Colombia and my mother's from Maryland. And I really grew up feeling, you know, neither 100% Colombian, 100% American, and there was always this kind of push and pull between these two facets of my identity. So that is one of the threads that kind of um, holds together this series as well, something I'm always exploring. And within the, those sort of two worlds, there are also, you know, in my artist statement, I talk about the conceptions of the Latinx female body. And I'm really talking about how sometimes a woman's body is celebrated, other times a woman's body is restricted, and seeing how these two worlds, um, as well as the different environments that I've grown up in, like Catholic school, which I'll talk about shortly, um, how all of those things really influence uh, you know, how I felt about my own body and how women feel about their body, sexuality, um, and that's such a formative thing that make up who you are. So. That's kind of the sort of overall um, conceptual idea behind the work. And I also wanted to highlight a little bit about process. I think that's something that a lot of people are always interested in when they see these pieces. And when I think about a piece, it usually, especially with these nine pieces, it really starts with kind of a memory. So I talk about the layers of the self and um, the parts, when I think about my life, you know, what parts of my life are so important to me or so formative? And one of those parts are my teen years growing up in a Catholic school in Indiana. Uh, it was a very small school. And this is perfect because it's right next to morning prayer, so I'll kind of talk about <laughs> this piece. Um, 
I grew up in this Catholic school from fourth grade all the way up to senior in high school, and my graduating class was 20 people. So it was a very, very small school. And when I was thinking about this piece, I was really wanting to um, capture this specific feeling about a very mundane event. So in my Catholic school, we would have morning prayer every morning. And this would be when the principal would read us the Bible <laughs> and we would all pray. It would be in the gym. And it was, uh, we talked about school events, and things like that. And it was boring. So I would often try to get out of this by hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> Um, it was hard because teachers generally would sweep the bathrooms to see if people were in there. So I could get away with it sometimes, but more often than not, I would have to join the rest of the students. And with this piece, I was thinking, this is such an ordinary, mundane thing that happened, but I still so vividly remember how I felt. Being you know, in the bathroom, hiding away, why was I there? Um, I remember how I felt in the assembly how strange it was to just be praying with a bunch of teenagers in a gym. Um, and I think a lot of the moments in many of these pieces do explore what we remember um, in sort of those formative times in our lives and why we, why we remember them. And I also think the senses are a big part of that too, um, as far as like touch being a sense that I like to highlight. So I think about how touch has really inform some of these special experiences, which is why I kind of have, you know, these hands that are clasping, I have hands that are praying or sort of holding on the body or reaching, really to highlight that kind of sense, that aura, that touch, and our experience with the physical world around us gives us. Um, so we have this piece, Morning Prayer, here, and it features a lot of the, um, of recurring um, themes that I have in a lot of these pieces. So that would be the face covering, like the mask, the painted backgrounds, um, and then also the photographic element of the piece. And the masks, I want to talk a little bit about, I refer to them as masks, but they originally, I got this idea of the halo, and of course growing up in this Catholic environment, all of the art in the school were pictures of saints <laughs> and you know holy people who had the halo and that really signified their divinity they're holy they're set apart from the rest and i wanted to take that and place it over the faces of the figures to shine a spotlight to show that what these women are experiencing is important and that it's holy and also divine no matter how mundane or ordinary um, that memory was or that story is um, I find it really important to highlight the, the sort of like female protagonist and her voice, how she's feeling and what's going on. And so using that kind of iconography of the halo was something that um, I kind of use throughout, throughout these pieces. There's also, of course, the idea of um, the mask. We all wear a mask and we sort of present a certain ourselves in a certain way but we might be feeling a different way. So there's also that element to it that I'm really interested in as far as like how we perform. And especially when I mentioned earlier, not feeling 100% Latina, not feeling 100% American, how do I perform um, those parts of myself? And so actually the piece behind everyone titled Quinceanera, um, that's really about that sort of Kind of push and pull between those two parts of my identity. So we have these two figures in the front, they're wearing this blue and red collared shirts and khaki pants. We even have these figures wearing white shirts and khaki pants, which were all in the uniform of um, my Catholic school. So that was really the kind of like American part of myself. And then the figure in the back in the dress, that dress was specifically inspired by my own quinceanera dress. And a quinceanera, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a celebration of a young woman's 15th birthday. Um, it's uh, very common in Latin American countries to celebrate that birth date. You're really becoming a, quote, woman. You're stepping out into society. 
and I was interested in visualizing how those two parts of myself might look like if they were interacting with one another. So that's why we have here this sort of Catholic schoolgirl. Um, what does she look like? What is she doing? And then we have this Latina, you know, I'm in my quinceanera, like I'm getting ready for the celebration. Um, and I wanted to put them all in the same space. So that's really as well in a lot of these other pieces, you get this sort of, I'm thinking about what does it look like if these parts of myself were interacting in the same area. And I think, which brings me to kind of the second um, kind of stylistic theme that you see, which would be painting and how I'm using painting to, in a lot of the backgrounds. And so some of the backgrounds, they are more abstract. Um, some of the backgrounds, so for instance, like I, this feels, um, you can see some hints of chairs, which are models, modeled off of like the school chairs that I would sit in in school. And then over here, we have more of a kind of colored, landscape-y, maybe strange in-between space. And that's what I think I love about using the paint. I was really interested, I talked a little bit about the sense of touch, but I was interested in synesthesia as well, which is this phenomenon of the senses sort of mixing up. And you, you can think about, for instance, tasting a sound or seeing like a color and then hearing something when you see a color. So, so it's kind of a mixture of the senses. I was interested in that phenomenon. So I was thinking, what color would this memory feel like? Or what color would this touch feel like? And I really wanted to be able to mix those own colors myself to kind of create that in-between space between this memory, this experience, um, and really incorporate that in the photograph. So that's kind of why I'm using that paint with the photo. It also goes back to the idea of layers and layering. And then the element of the photograph is really important for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason being I wanted to highlight uh, the limbs and the hands. The photograph, in, for me, really grounds the body in the real world. I knew I didn't want to paint the hands. I didn't want to paint. Um, the legs. I wanted to take a photograph of the body. And a lot of this work, like I mentioned, is about the body and kind of having agency over your body, especially as a woman. And I knew as a female photographer as well, I wanted to take those photographs and be in them and be in those portraits. And I wanted to highlight, like I said again, touch and the relationship that our limbs have with the physical world around us. So we see a lot of hands, we see um, legs, and then we're able to see some parts of the body even if they're kind of covered with uh, clothing. So that's kind of how I approached mixing the two. They, they do feel very painterly to me, but the photograph really is the base of how these pieces sort of come about and come together. Um, yeah, and so does anyone actually have any questions at this moment? I've talked a little bit about, you know, the conceptual intent, um, but does anyone have any specific questions at all? Yes. Well, I'm just curious to know about the, the mixing and the painting and the touches. So how, how, what, what are the stages? Of, oh. Are you making, are you making like one big photograph to turn it and paint it on, or are you going back and forth? Yes, so the process for these have been a little bit different depending on what um, I kind of envision for the final piece. So for, ex for instance, if we have maybe a busier piece like this one, this is actually a mixture of quite a few smaller pieces um, that I made originally, like I would print out a photograph. So I would take a photograph, um, I would recreate this memory for instance, this down here, we see some figures in a pool. I was thinking about this um, pool party that I had in like eighth grade or something, but that's such a strange kind of awkward time in your life. You're like 
you know, you're in a bikini, but you're still kind of young, and so it's a little weird, and there are boys there, and so it was this very, like, you start becoming a little bit more aware of your body, and I had written a lot of my diary about this as well, um, and I started with that idea, so I recreated the kind of, uh, like, gestures, and I took photographs of myself acting it out, and then I would print out that photograph on a small matte piece of paper and begin painting in the water. So I didn't want to be in a pool to do this. I didn't actually want to recreate um, with photography of like me being at these locations. I liked, it felt more natural for me to go in and draw because I was able to kind of conjure that memory through painting, if that makes sense. Um, so I would paint on that photograph, and then I would re-photograph it. <laughs> and so I have that photograph in my kind of gallery, and I'll think about, I would make quite a few of these grouped, like smaller pieces, re-photograph them. And when I would find a relationship between some of the smaller pieces, that's when I go in digitally and create this sort of collage. So I'm able to move some of the figures around and create a collage. I would print that out again and layer more paint or more, um, you know, using gouache, using watercolor, pastels, these types of mediums on a matte paper, which is really easy to draw on, and it doesn't bend the paper too much. Once I felt happy with that, I would rephotograph it again. So it kind of depends, there's this kind of pattern of like making a small piece, photographing it, um, printing it out, seeing how I like it. And all of these, the final pieces, I wanted to make them much larger, and then I could go in and draw at a larger scale as well. So it's kind of a layering, <laughs> literally, of just kind of doing the same process um, again and again. Yes, so, yes, there are the final layers of these, you know, of all of these pieces are when you take, so for instance, so for instance, if I were to show you the, like, file that I had to print out the piece, it would look really weird and much different. There would be a lot of pockets missing and a lot of details missing. It would look kind of like a, a sketch, maybe, or like a bare bone. It wouldn't feel very um, put together. So it's the final details, I'm kind of like making these final details on these larger pieces, um, but I'm not going in and painting at that scale, if that makes sense. So like the backgrounds, that's part of the photograph. Um, but some of the work with ink, the pastels, some of the lines, um, you know, I think, so for instance, like this piece is a lot where I went in and you can see some gouache here and some ink, um, and I added in, a few lines with the pastel, so, and also kind of this area as well. Um, but still the majority of it is technically a photograph of the other piece <laughs> before I went in and, and did the details.
Nice. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is, you know, and there it's, it is, it does feel like a lot of paint, but also even when I think about the process too, it's so dependent on these self-portraits. It's so dependent on the performance of reenacting some of these um, ways that the body is moving in space. And that's what I, I love that stage of it too. And going in and working with lighting and you know those elements as well. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you can kind of see that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and you talk about touch. I mean, in the context of a picture that has so much paint, I mm -hmm. feel like the, the limbs and things that you see that are photographed mm -hmm. becomes a kind of touch for the audience. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, uh, it's a place where a physicality and a, and a sort of, uh, it becomes less abstract and becomes sort of, again, something, something that feels more like you're touching the place. Yeah. I love that question. I think that's a beautiful question because I, as artists too, we are dealing, it is coming from a very personal place. And it was very hard to uh, go through those diaries, <laughs> even though I do that kind of often because I've been writing in diaries since I was in like fourth grade. Um, did not use any of that material <laughs> because it was pretty, it was pretty silly. But um, one of the, kind of events that had me thinking about transformative times in my life was really hard for me. And I actually, I, I can point to this piece, um, St. Jude Tree, which is, it was about this, oh no, I can't see now. Um, it was about this friendship that had ended when I had gotten to college. I was friends with someone since I was like 13 and then our friendship, we just had a fallout. And I think that happens, it's natural, but when it happened, it was really traumatic for me. Um, and coming from a small Catholic high school, that was my only best friend, so it was really like a huge part of my life being with this person. And um, this series, I was thinking about that friendship and what it means to uh, like feel like you know someone so much um, I mentioned that earlier, and it's like, it's really hard to know somebody because when that friendship ended, you know, I think she was going through a lot of things that I might not have been aware of. Um, so revisiting that part of my life was really difficult. And making this piece, it's titled St. Jude Tree. It's based off of this tree in my backyard. Um, again, a lot of these things are very mundane. They're very ordinary. And like, in the looking back, I'm like, oh, that's so funny. I never thought it was important until now. Um, but there was a tree in my backyard that my, my friend and I would go and like create a ritual. We would make wishes. Um, we would put like little prayer cards in the tree and it would be a fun sort of thing. And thinking about how that friendship ended and looking at it years later, even though it's still, it definitely still hurts and it's still sad, um, there is a part of me that feels like I can see it from a different way and come to terms with the fact that that was something that if it didn't happen, you know, I would kind of be a different person. And so I think it's helpful when I was dealing with those like harder emotions to really realize like it still makes you who you are in this moment. Um, and then also, I think like, especially when I was talking about the duality of like being Colombian American and how tricky that is for me, um, seeing the pieces and 
realizing that if I didn't have those experiences or feelings, I wouldn't have been able to really make this work. And in, in, in a way, a lot of the things that are really hard for you to deal with or come to terms with does inevitably make you who you are as a person, and that's really unique, and no one can really like take that away from you, and that's kind of what makes you like you, and that's really special. So in that way, thinking of it in that way was, was helpful for me, because it's hard, and I think a lot of, especially in the t uh, thinking about the teen years and Catholic school, and that was a weird and difficult time, or thinking about identity, feeling like you don't fit in into this box or this box, it's hard to come to terms with that. But it also is like, that's, that's who you are, and that's a thing that should be celebrated. Yeah, yeah, um, thank you. Um, so, yeah, thinking about that and covering the face. And I had a lot of, you know, on the one hand, I think I was, I liked being able to highlight these expressions that were so, that are so, not cartoony, but just very direct. Like, oh, this, this figure is sad or this figure is angry. Um, I like being able to use the mask in that way. But then in some pieces, I did want to show more of the face. Even if it is through a veil, you can still see the person behind it or the face behind it. Um, and I think a lot of the work leading up to it was kind of confronting this mask um, and confronting how it's tricky, it's tricky to really show how you're feeling, but at the same time there, all, there are, there is this kind of agency that you can feel when you do remove the mask, when you are able to see the face, and I, some of the um, last pieces that I was making, I was showing more, especially in that piece, Nina con alas, with, you know, she's reaching up and she's kind of, She's, her face is, is visible, and that was kind of a big thing for me in, in making the, that decision. Um, should I cover the face or not? But I think because I was thinking of like, yes, you can hide behind this mask, and sometimes it is really protective. You shouldn't be afraid also to explore what's underneath, and that can also be really powerful. Um, for someone to do so and I like your question about survival because it is hard and you do survive these things um, and they're very you know difficult emotions to deal with as well so it is you are kind of constantly going through that but like I said that sort of removal of the mask too um, is something to take power in and also I realized that 
as I was making these pieces, because I think when, when you're an artist, you know, and you're making your, your things, you're not always analyzing everything until it's done. So you're able to step back and see, and oftentimes your work tells you way more than what you intended. I realized that there are some of these figures are more um, comforting. Some of these figures want to comfort the others, or want to be there, or want to hold, or embrace, or touch. Um, specifically, the communion dress in the back, I really felt like that was a point where there are parts of myself that are very protective, um, but also loving towards the more vulnerable, um, or perhaps survival mode parts. Um, and so that's kind of something that was revealed as well. These more kind of loving maternal selves. That's a good. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm definitely don't feel finished. I keep thinking. I keep uncovering um, these things, and even on my recent trip to Colombia, I was drawing and sketching ideas of like, I, oh, this this is awakening this feeling again, or um, I want to see, I want to try this with the same type of process. Um, but it's still telling that story, so I'm not, I'm not finished. And I actually have a new piece that I'm working on that will be at Candela Gallery in Richmond, um, Virginia, in May through June. So that new piece will be part of this, these nine, so we'll have ten. <laughs> um, but yeah, still telling these stories. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, this one this one was also kind of uh, strange for me because it's just a single, a single figure. And the, the title being next to myself, I always think of duality, I think of double. Um, but the reason I wanted to sort of have this singular figure was to show that all of these stories and all of these moments emanate from a single person. So that was kind of one reason where like, again, we contain multitudes, you know, that idea that there are these universes in every single person. So I wanted to highlight that idea, um, but I also wanted to show this sort of sheer, white, pure dress. And that comes from a couple of different um, parts. So that comes from the kind of Catholic idea of this purity, this like, sort of covered, pious woman. But because of the sheerness under, I wanted to show that there's a body that exists. You know, this is, this body is part of this person. Um, and that it's not something that you should cover up or hide behind, you know, or if you choose to, and that's okay too. But I wanted to kind of show that there's this body that exists behind this pure dress, and it is still beautiful and divine. Um, but at the same time, when I added the figure kind of peering back, I think there is always that sort of fear that we have in exposing ourselves, just not just our bodies, but like who we are and all of these stories. And, um, and so I still wanted to have that kind of, and I like what you said, kind of dark or, um, I think of that too, because it, it's a little, even though it's a little scary to confront those things, yeah, but it's still it's still there, and I think coming to terms with that, I am still having these voices or these things that can be hard to deal with. They're still there, but I am still in front of that, and you are still kind of in a place of power that you can, you know, think about how what your relationship with that could be.
Thank you. And I was actually also really interested in like um, something that I was looking at throughout this work were Mexican retablos. And these are stories that are generally painted on wood, sometimes on metal, and they are made by anyone. And I loved that the people who make these retablos, they don't need to be an artist. Um, it's really this very accessible way of uh, creating a story in which it's like a thanking. So for instance, if someone feels like they're grateful in their life, it's also generally um, religious. If they feel like a miracle has happened or maybe someone was sick in their family and they had gotten better, they'll make this retablo that will show you know, someone in a bed, it's painted, it uses very bright colors, it's very simple. Um, you know, it, it's not super, super detailed, but again, it's just someone painting what happened, painting the story as thanks. And so I loved that approach too, of like, we're using these light colors, we're, you know, we're telling that story through, with the colors as well. And that was kind of, so I like that you mentioned that kind of, the bright colors that we see in these pieces. So, yeah. Any other questions or? comments, and I'll be around as well if you want to chat about them, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.